Hi, Micropunter here. I've got uh, an old uh, damaged uh, 40 times magnifying microscope objective and I want to take it apart because I want to know how many parts uh, it's made of. Well, we have uh, plenty of microscope objectives. Uh, many of them are a little bit damaged, broken or extremely dirty. And I found one that I wanted to take apart. And you can see that the front lens is not only dirty, but there's also a small crack in there. Um, so this microscope objective is totally um, broken, not usable at all. It happens to be a 40 times magnifying objective. And when you look at it from the back, you can actually see the crack um, in the front lens and you can also see the dirt. And uh, yeah, that's basically a, a magnified image here. And the crack is quite well visible. This is the way it should look like. Okay, that's a good objective. It's, you see the structures are quite clear. But when you look um, at the same specimen using the damaged objective, uh, then you can see it's very blurry. The contrast is extremely low. Um, so I think uh, I don't have to feel bad about taking this one apart. It happens to be so-called spring-loaded objective. Um, so there is a spring in there which protects the front lens when you crash uh, the um, objective into the slide and uh, what I'm doing right now is, is I'm simply unscrewing the cover here um, and I'm doing this in real time so no shortcuts okay um, so you actually see um, everything um, the way that I've uh, taken everything apart you can see that there is also a small screw in there that holds it in place um, at the beginning, I had some problems actually uh, knowing um, how to proceed how to take it apart. So I decided I'm simply going to remove this screw first. But um, I also found out that this really did not help um, at all in taking uh, the objective apart. Um, yeah, it did not. The screw was only there to prevent uh, the front part from rotating. Uh, but actually, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing really changed here. Um, there were several of these uh, holes in uh, the barrel. I don't know why they've done that. Uh, but in any case, uh, it took me a few minutes uh, to actually figure out um, how to proceed until I found out that the back part here is actually a plastic cover. So I simply used a screwdriver to pry it off. Um, yeah, and it went off uh, then quite easily. Um, and basically this gave us now access uh, to the inside part um, of the objective. And yeah, that's basically the plastic cap. Yeah, and it was simply there as a protective covering, but I think it did not really fulfill any meaningful purpose otherwise. Um, yeah, this is a so-called a caliper. This is actually a device, a tool used for measuring um, diameters and distances, uh, but I'm now using it also to, to open uh, the next uh, part of the objective. Um, the thing that I'm now uh, turning out, that is also made of plastic, um, so it was actually also um, quite easily removable. It takes a little bit of patience, of course, um, but it was actually quite uh, quite easy to do. So as I said, everything is in real time, so I'm not going to do any shortcuts now. Just have to uh, bear with me. Um, normally, uh, you would probably use uh, decent tools for this, uh, but it also worked. Yeah? Yeah. Of course, the camera sometimes goes a little bit out of focus uh, when I'm moving um, around. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I decided I'm just going to leave this and I used my fingernails and this also worked. Okay. Yeah. So um, actually it is like this. One of the things that surprised me is, is that ultimately it is quite easy to take uh, the objective apart. Uh, of course, there are no parts that are glued here. Um, obviously, but the front, the lenses themselves, sometimes they are actually held in place with a so-called lens kit or lens cement. But all of the other parts here are actually um, accessible. Um, and I took it away and here I saw the spring. And the first thing that surprised me a little bit is, is that the spring was a little bit corroded. You can actually see that there is, uh, yeah. I was able to wipe off uh, the rust a little bit with my finger. This uh, kind of surprised me a little bit, I have to admit, uh, because uh, yeah, it goes a little bit again out of focus. But that is essentially the spring that is uh, responsible for uh, pushing uh, the front part uh, down. And uh, now that I have removed this, it was quite easy for me um, to remove uh, the inside part. And this is basically what I've done now. This is now the inside barrel carefully took it out uh, yeah and this is basically how it looks like we're now slowly working our way inwards here 
And now, the, of course, the next question is, is now, how can I take uh, this one all apart? Um, actually, it is uh, made of, of one piece. Uh, it has different colors, I saw, but actually it is one piece. Uh, and what I'm doing right now is I'm again using the caliper here and I'm now removing this inside ring just the same way that I've done before. And this inside ring here now was made of metal. Okay, again, a little bit of patience is necessary. Again, everything in real time, no shortcuts. Actually, I was quite surprised that I was able to put the whole objective back together again after I finished uh, taking it apart. Um, but uh, again, this is not something I would recommend that you do with intact objective because objectives because this, of course, will introduce also dust. And uh, once you've got dust in the system, it's going to be quite difficult uh, to remove that. Uh, so that's basically what I'm doing right now. I'm just turning the barrel and then again continue with the fingernails and uh, this was actually quite uh, easy to remove luckily so there was actually no corrosion there that kind of uh, made it stick in, in there so this uh, inside ring I've removed that now um, Basically, this ring held all of the lens elements and I could not push them out like this. There was also a smaller barrel in there um, holding, uh, holding the lenses in place. So this also goes out. And now here, that is the so-called the heart of the objective. This is basically where we can find the, the lenses, the individual lens elements. There are several of them, um, of course. And, uh, this is basically how it looks like. Uh, it could be that, uh, well, there were three parts here, but it could be that the individual lenses are not individual, but that they're all made of, uh, indiv uh, of uh, smaller elements, okay? This was some kind of a, a plastic ring here, or Teflon ring, uh, maybe also a, a spacer. And uh, the lenses were either glued or yeah, in place um, in those, uh, seems to be made of copper. Um, but it is like this that uh, it could be that there are several uh, lens elements still sticking together. Okay, so um, so I did not uh, do this any uh, take it apart any further because I did not want to damage the individual lenses themselves. Yeah, so that is basically how it was together, and it could be that one of those uh, that these are not individual lenses here, but actually also doublets or even triplets. I don't know. Um, something that. Uh, we have to, I, I don't know, I have not uh, taken it apart further. Yeah? And you might wonder actually, why do we actually need so many individual lenses? And this is uh, actually there to uh, compensate uh, and to remove all of those so-called lens errors, like for example, chromatic, chromatic aberrations. And if you take a, sim a single simple convex lens, then this convex lens will actually uh, cause so-called lens errors. And this causes purple and yellow fringing. This means that um, basically objects will appear to have a purple fringe around them because of the different wavelengths of the light are diffracted differently. And by having multiple lens elements in there, you're able to compensate for that. So because this is a so-called achromatic objective, yeah, it somehow stuck in place, uh, the lens. Um, and I did not attempt to actually uh, take it out further. Yeah, so that is basically um, that's basically the furthest uh, that I took uh, the lenses apart, or the objective apart. Everything is arranged here. It's a, it's a spacer ring. So there were 12 different parts I could identify, including the spacer ring. And that's basically how um, an objective looks like. It's a, yeah, it's a high-tech uh, device in the sense that uh, um, it uh, really has to be very precise, uh, has to be very precisely manufactured. Yeah, there's still some dirt on my table a little bit that I have to remove. <laughs> a small, a small fly. <laughs> um, okay, so that is uh, basically that's it. Okay, um, different objectives, of course, have a different design. Um, yeah, that, oh yeah, of course, I also wanted to now know, okay, you can actually see that the small convex lens, they actually magnify. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically um, all I wanted to show you right now. Um, and uh, now basically um, I put everything back together again. Well, um, basically uh, that's it. Uh, you might wonder how can it be possible that uh, a microscope objective is in such a bad condition 
um, it's like this, that this was used on an educational microscope and uh, students uh, basically uh, made their permanent slides and they rotated the microscope objective into the mounting medium and they also used immersion oil on this uh, objective, um, even though it's not designed for that. Uh, so. Um, yeah, it's completely damaged, it's completely broken, um, and uh, therefore um, it's uh, of course not a big deal opening it, but I would highly recommend that you do not open your microscope objectives. The reason is, is, is because you're going to get dust into the objective and then it's going to be very, very difficult to clean it again. Um, however, there was also another story I just wanted to tell you at the very end. Um, I, a, few, a few months ago I talked to a microscope servicing company um, and I told them that we have the problem that students essentially yeah uh, they use immersion oil on the non-immersion microscope objectives and I uh, kind of complained about that that basically our um, microscopes uh, become damaged because of this and then he was almost starting to laugh and he said yeah um, don't worry uh, it's not only happening in schools but uh, we just had a we had to just take apart a very expensive microscope objective from a research company uh, because uh, it was like this that they used a non-oil immersion um, objective in immersion oil and what happened is, is that immersion oil actually went into the objective and behind the lens and they had to completely take it apart and give it a clean so he said well it doesn't only happen in schools it also happens in research organizations yeah so just a side story in any case i wish you a nice day happy microbe hunting as always and uh, bye bye